Hello and welcome, dear viewers. When it comes to SUVs, I would say that I have mixed feelings. The ones that I tend to prefer are the ones with either 600 horsepower or the ones that are very capable off-road. Generally speaking, your middle-of-the-road, daily-use SUVs don't particularly excite me. Today, however, we're going to review just such an SUV, the Geely Hao Yue, and I'm going to see if I can find something to love about an SUV that's really just all about practicality. The Haoyue is a seven-seat SUV and the largest one offered by Chinese manufacturer Geely. Yes, it's pronounced Geely, not Geely. Geely has been making waves in the automotive world for almost a decade, with the purchase of Volvo, Proton, and Lotus, and the creation of the Lincoln Co. brand. The exterior styling on the Haoyue is pretty traditional SUV. That means broad shoulders and beefy presence. Here on the front end, we have the latest version of Geely's signature Cosmic Recall grille design, and I think it's the most handsome version yet. It looks as though the Geely badge was dropped into a pool of water, and these pieces here represent the ripples that ensued. I also like the little LED here. It's a kind of L shape. The headlights themselves also do a neat little party trick whenever you unlock the car. The sheer size of the Haoyue becomes apparent when it is viewed in profile. It might not stack up to the size of SUVs like America's Chevy Suburban, but it's plenty big for most roads. The proportions of the body are good, and it avoids the boring slab sides of many SUVs. But I must say that I wish the 18-inch wheels were a bit larger. I understand the benefits of these wheels in terms of ride comfort and price, but I think the overall look would benefit from 19 or even 20-inch alloys. Maybe a set of beefy off-road tires would balance the look a bit. The rear design of the Haoyue is simple, but not simplistic. The rear taillight design is distinctive, especially when lit. And I like this aluminum look piece that connects the two. Now, Geely is pretty lucky in that their English name doesn't sound quite so strange to non-Chinese speakers' ears, especially compared to some other Chinese brands. This is a not insignificant benefit when it comes time for export. If we open up the electric tailgate on the Haoyue, you begin to see its real forte, and that is space. Lots and lots of space. If you lay down the second and third rows, you get 2,050 liters of space, plus underfloor storage compartments. Geely will even give you a custom air mattress that fits snugly inside. You can always put your cargo on the roof rails while you sleep soundly indoors. Here inside, touches like the big grab handles front and rear are intended to give you a sense of rugged capability, and I think that overall, it succeeds. Uh, one of the things I really like about Geely models is the material quality and the fit and finish. Now, this applies to the Geely Jaji that we drove earlier this year, and it also applies to the Haoyue. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a car that goes for between fifteen and $21,000. So all the materials are not real aluminum and reclaimed wood, but it's pretty hard to find anything that's genuinely unpleasant to touch. For example, the materials here on the dashboard are soft touch and the kind of thing that you would expect to see in much more expensive cars. Now, the only thing that reminds you of the more affordable price point is perhaps the silver elements here on the dashboard. Uh, we are in the top-of-the-line trim, which means that we have two 12.3-inch LCD screens. These screens are well integrated with a very functional UI and quick responses. The other thing I want to highlight about the interior is the 360-degree camera on the Haoyue. Now, this is becoming a more and more of a standard feature as cars get larger and harder to see out of. So what I judge them based on is how much they distort your surroundings when you use them. In this respect, the Haoyue is actually pretty good, as opposed to some other systems, especially older ones, that make everything around you look like a Picasso painting. It makes driving an SUV this large in a city like Shanghai a much more manageable prospect. As a nature lover, I'm very excited by this giant 1.5 meter sunroof. Now, most sunroofs this large don't actually open, but the one in the Haoyue does. That means even backseat passengers can enjoy a little bit of sun. Speaking of backseat passengers, they have it pretty good. Seems like the Geely Haoyue was designed with families in mind from the very start. Space back here is copious, and while it may look like a traditional uh, bench seat, each of these three seats is independently adjustable. Second and third row passengers also have their own climate zone, and second row passengers have their own climate controls. 
Now, as a grown adult, I don't relish the idea of sitting in the third row of really any vehicle. But as someone that grew up in the back seat of a minivan, I have to say that I think you can do worse in the third row of the Hao Yue. It helps that it has its own separate air vents and adjustable backrests. These are both things I desperately could have used during those long road trips of my youth. The Hao Yue's powertrain diverges from the American tradition of V8s with a more practical 1.8 liter turbo 4 connected to a 7 speed DCT. That engine puts out 184 horsepower and an impressive 300 newton meters of torque. The Hao Yue is front wheel drive only, and despite its hilled scent control, it makes no pretense about its off roading skills. Geely also doesn't offer an official 0 to 100 km per hour time either, which, well, it makes sense. This is an affordable family SUV. So 0 to 100 times aren't really the point. Despite my addiction to V8 engines, sitting in the driver's seat of the Hao Yue, I have to say that it doesn't really feel like it wants for power. That 300 newton meters of torque comes on quick, and you can actually chirp the tires from a full stop with a full throttle launch, even with ESP on. Now, most SUV buyers aren't going to be doing full throttle launches, but thankfully the Hao Yue can also offer smooth power delivery. In fact, the engine and transmission both seem to be tuned more for comfort, with smooth shifts and easy throttle modulation. Geely is widely considered to offer some of the best DCT transmissions of any Chinese manufacturer, so that's not particularly surprising. The Hao Yue rides on what is essentially the same platform as the Jiaji MPV including the McPherson struts up front and the torsion beam in the rear. Yeah, non-independent rear suspension is a bit old school, but my gut tells me they chose it for its tidy dimensions. An independent rear suspension would have taken up more space, and hence eaten up more space inside the cabin. I love the idea of clambering down an off-road trail in a highly capable SUV just as much as the next enthusiast. But the reality is that for most SUV buyers, an SUV should be practical above all else. That means being able to carry a lot of stuff and people in comfort. The Geely Hao Yue is a pretty impressive feat of engineering when it comes to space per dollar spent. So if you're not somebody that gets hung up on the idea of imaginary off-road adventures, I think it'll suit your needs just fine.